Say hello to the world's smallest bear, the sun bear. These cute looking bears remain small throughout their lives with maximum lengths reaching around one and a half meters. But being so cute is also one of their downfalls. The sun bear is the second rarest bear after the giant panda and one of the reasons for this is the illegal pet trade. Cubs are highly sought after as they seem incredibly cute. Mothers are killed and orphaned cubs end up in small cages somewhere in someone's home. Today I'll be diving deep into this topic by visiting Dr. Wong and the Bornean Sun Bear Conservation Center to learn more about the species, their threats and how this organization is trying to save the sun bears. Today I'm at the Bornean Sun Bear Conservation Center here in Sepulok to go behind the scenes and learn about their work as well as the incredible Bornean Sun Bear. They are very shy, especially stranger. You know, you can come up here and then be really quiet and then the door is just open. Oh. Yeah. This morning I am joined by Dr. Wong and the first thing that we're getting to see is actually the uh, bears being released out of the uh, pens to go into the enclosures and they are very shy so apparently they can already smell me and they hear new sounds so they are very shy when coming out so they are going to take their sweet time. The man behind the Bornean Sunbear Conservation Center is Dr. Wong. His early research was pioneering in understanding the sunbear, and his lifetime dedication to understanding these animals has also helped to make major steps to protect them. In 2008, he opened the rehabilitation center after witnessing firsthand the large-scale threats and abuse of the species. He has made it his life's mission to do as much as he can to ensure their survival, but this brief introduction to him will never do justice how much time, passion and resources he has spent over the course of his life to understand and protect these animals. I feel humbled that today I get to film alongside him as he teaches me more about the sun bears and the work at BSBCC. So right now we are beside Pen D, Pen Donkey, and in total we have 10 different forest pens of various sizes. And then today, Pendy, Pendy, yeah, today we are going to release three bears here. Nano, the male, Noah, the male, and Mary. Both Nano and Noah is about six years old male, and Mary is about 12 to 13 years old. Yeah. And then Mary is quite special in the sense that his growth is stunted because his previous owner did not fed her milk when she was an infant, uh, when she was a baby. Mm. And then her growth stunted. Even after uh, she came here, we tried to nurse her back, um, her growth already stopped. You know? So she mm. got a relatively small body size small body. Uh, compared to other bears. She weighs about 22 kilograms. The other female adult uh, female bear is supposed to weigh 35 kilograms. Sun bears are actually the smallest bear in the world uh, but when I saw them now I didn't expect them to be so tiny. Uh, they are just they just look very miniature so I thought maybe they were still youngsters but they are um, fully grown uh, adults except for Mary. Uh, this is our two bear houses. Uh, every evening, all the bears are trained to go back to this bear house and they will spend the night in the bear house. Mm -hmm. And then the following morning, after we check all the forest enclosure fencing and ensure that the fence is intact, no damage and also the voltage for the hot wire is in normal conditions, then we release the bears out in the forest enclosure. Okay. Uh, about nine o'clock or so and also that's the time where our center opened to the public so the people were coming in. When, when I designed the center I designed it for 40 bears uh, 15 years ago but right now we got 43 bears and then in the next few days we are going to have another bear coming in there will be 44 so we are quite packed at the moment. Very unfortunate you know because all of these bears are rescued bear all rescued from people's private pets or animals being displayed in mini zoo, crocodile farms, recreation area and things like that. Or sometimes people 
uh, saw somebody selling bag cups and then they purchased and then sent to us or sent mm. to the wildlife department. And the sun bear pet skipping is absolutely against the law. Sun bears are class one protected species in Sabah. No one is allowed to keep a sun bear. When they are babies, they are very cute. A lot of people thought as long as they bottle fed a baby bears, it will grow mm. up into a chihuahua, which is not going to happen because they are still wildlife. Okay, so what Dr. Wang explained to me is that this is originally a cage uh, that was used to keep a sun bear in, which is obviously going to be way too small for a beautiful creature to be living in. scenes they are extremely organized knowing exactly how much food each individual is going to get so I'm just looking at the chart that Dr. Wong just showed me and they get a diverse nutrition from the different fruits the starches the dog pellets and stuff but yeah they're very well on schedule they know exactly who is getting what in which feeding uh, which time of the day the amounts uh, all of that so it's really great to see how organized all of this is. So we know that Sunday is uh, omnivores it's opportunistic feeders they eat everything uh, in the forest, including fruits, including invertebrates, including meat as well, if they can find. Uh, here, we have no way to find that kind of wild food for the bears, for so many bears, in such a high quantity. And then, so we have no choice but to use the human food that we purchase from the market, such as fruits and vegetables, meat, eggs. Uh, dog pellets for to meet their nutritional requirements. Here we can also see that some bears are getting fish, fish oil, oil, so omega-3 I'm guessing, yes, to get that absolutely. in. Yeah. And uh, the various supplements. So you make sure that on top of what food they're getting, they're also getting the extras they need to stay healthy. So much care is taken each day to prepare nutritional and diverse meals for each bear. From the different foods they combine to keep up a healthy diet, to providing supplements to the bears based on the vet's recommendations. They also take into account each bear's health. For one of the 30-year-old male bears, for example, they have to boil the sweet potato so that it is softer for him to chew as his teeth are not as strong and healthy as the younger bears. But all of this food and upkeep is not cheap. The center feeds hundreds of kilograms of food each day to make sure all the sun bears are well fed and healthy. This column adds up one day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So over here we have one of the dens that one of the bears would sleep in and it's getting a nice good scrub while the bear is already out in the other enclosure. Um, so what Dr. Wong explained is that sun bears enjoy to sleep high and dry so they all have like this uh, sleeping perimeter, they have something to hang on. One of the other dens has a hammock as well. But basically this is where the bears will spend their nights uh, because they can't be out in the outside enclosures during the night. But then during the day they obviously get to leave these quarters and go foraging in their forest enclosures. So you see in this enclosure that there's also one of the hammocks and then the door in the back there is actually the door that we saw earlier today that goes out. BSBCC has five pillars that form an umbrella over all of the work that they do. Animal welfare, rehabilitation, research, education, and ecotourism. Ensuring that bears have access to their natural environment, are well looked after, and are rehabilitated is the foundation of the work at the actual center. Making sure that any bear that does stay with them gets a proper environment and care to live out their years properly. So we're outside again and we are walking along some of the uh, forest ends. Now I've already been warned to not put my hand on the fence because as you might be able to see, all of the fence are electrified and that is purely to keep the bears safe and keep them in, inside. Uh, instead of uh, getting out because a lot of the bears that are here well actually all of the bears that are staying in the sanctuary part um, they will not be able to be released into the wild because they are either too traumatized they've gone through things that um, will not allow them to thrive out in the wild anymore so they have to stay in these enclosures uh, so basically we're keeping them in but we're also keeping them safe by not being able to get out coming to smell us Mm, yeah, smell it. Yeah, so right. Yeah, so all the bears, uh, the first thing that they do is to smell, smell, try to identify. He is actually he Kipaku, uh, Kipaku is him. Itam and Batung are the three victims. I strongly believe is because of the pandemic, cause people lost their life, and then people will start to hunting and poaching to 
you know, to sustain their livelihood. Uh, very sad. And right now, he's doing the suckling behavior, which is a stereotypic behavior. And imagine that all mammals, infant mammals, are all brought up by their mother. No exception, but for them, their mother has been brutally killed. When looking at these creatures and hearing the stories from Dr. Wong, it becomes very apparent the tragedies these bears have faced at a very young age. Some bears face many threats and most of them are pretty gruesome. They are hunted for their gallbladders and other body parts for medicinal purposes which have no scientifically proven medicinal value and their feet are considered a delicacy in some Asian countries with top dollar being paid for them. Moms are killed so babies can be sold as pets and of course their forest habitat quickly disappearing, leaving many of these tiny little bears traumatized and unable to live in the wild for the rest of their lives. As the sun bears that live until today, they all know one fact, which is humans are the most dangerous animal ever created on planet Earth until today. Mm. Run away from people if they sense any human present. And but sure enough, after the mom told the babies, the mom got killed. The baby literally witnessed the brutal killing of the mother, and then uh, they are being kept by the mother's killer murderers yeah so they are suffering from a lots of trauma you know in human term is various degree of pdsd uh, often very very high so a lot of our bears show abnormality psychologically not only physically but also psychologically Here at the center, it is not that the bears are just put into their enclosures and left for their own devices. They are really looked after well. I mean, animal welfare here is a top priority. And um, a few of the things that they do here, for example, is that when orphaned babies come in at a young age, they will get a surrogate so that they learn different skills that they would need to survive in the enclosure or survive in the wild, like climbing trees and foraging around. They also get the enrichment. And uh, like Dr. Wong said, like they will also rotate through the enclosures so this also gives them a, a mental stimula because they'll have new smells new people these two seem very curious <laughs> by our presence so they've followed us uh, along um, but yeah in this way the bears are not only kept uh, healthy physically with uh, their food and their, uh, their activity but mentally they are also stimulated Before I start my sun bear study, I don't even know sun bear can climb trees. You didn't know before you started the studies? No. Why? Because the bears, the sun bears that I see, all of them are from zoos. The zoo don't have these big trees. Second, they are not be able to climb tree or don't have the opportunity to climb trees since they were little. And then when they grow up, they don't have the strength to support themselves. To go so up? Tree climbing have to start climb when they are young so that it develops the muscle and the strength. Despite being found over a large range in Southeast Asia, some bears are the least studied bear species. Dr. Wang conducted the very first ecological study of wild some bears in Sabah's rainforest in Malaysian Borneo. His research has been crucial in understanding their behavior. Currently, there are over 30 research projects running through the BSBCC and their partners on wild and captive some bears. Research is important to understand some bears' behavior, ecological importance, home range, and their threats. Research and knowledge are crucial for wildlife conservation and better management practices. So it's time for them to get fed. They are eagerly awaiting. <laughs> Is there a strategy to the feeding? Yeah, so I, I usually do I'll give them carrot first because uh, they prefer banana over carrot but I need to force them to eat their carrot <laughs> because obviously there's a lot of good stuff from the carrot. So right now we see a very interesting phenomenon. You see over there, Shira is mm. over there, there's a fantail, there's a bird around the bears. You see that tiny little bird that uh -huh. hopping? Yeah. Yeah. And in the wild, a lots of animals like birds, pheasants, bearded pigs tag along sun bear for feeding opportunity. Because when sun bear rip apart a tree trunk or a decay wood or a 
NNs or termite nets, there's always something left behind. They leave a mess. Yeah. Dr. Wong is uh, carefully eyeing the bears because in this enclosure there are supposed to be five bears, whereas now there are only four bears feeding at the moment. But one thing he just mentioned about the birds and the coexisting with the bears and how they help each other just shows like how uh, important it is to have the bears in the ecosystem. So sun bears are keystone species and they are very important in the ecosystems that they live in. So they are natural seed dispensers, they help uh, keep the, the soil and everything uh, healthy. But as you now know, they also help other animals uh, by providing them with food. And an interesting thing with the birds is that they will also um, now return the favor to the bears by doing their warning calls if any danger is in the area. So everything is so intricately linked together in the natural world. So it's very important that we protect the species because once you take them out, you're busy you know, breaking down the full chain. It's not just this animal that would disappear. A lot of other elements in the ecosystem would start struggling as well. Manus, the fifth individual, is a little bit late to the party, but rather uh, rather late than never, I guess. Here's actually our first sight of the walkway that as a visitor you would be uh, at the top. So you're looking from the top into the dens instead of from the sides where we are at the moment. And that is full of a 12 years old male. Hello, boy boy. Are you a good boy today? You are a good boy today. Uh, his story was, he was captured when he was really small, before he opened his eye. And then when he opened his eye, he saw humans. And I, and I believe humans imprint on him. Mm. We rescued him when he was about four months old or so. When he first came here, I don't think he knew he was a bear. Oh. Why he always want human attention? If there's no people around, he would like cry, cry, cry until people showed up. Then he stopped. Mm. I bond with him. I become his surrogate mother. And after the bonding established, I can walk him in the forest, bring him out. And then uh, during one of these walking in the forest sessions, he got a scratch on his belly. And then uh, the vet come and treat the wound. And after the wound heal, he open up from the other side, the vet come and treat the wound. After the wound heal, he open up from the back. And he has been doing it for years. Scratching it? Scratching it so that there are people come and treat the wound. He wants oh, human attention. It's a psychological thing. It's a psychological thing. So that is a self-inflicted wound in order for him to gain human attention. attention. Yeah, he has been doing it for years. That's why the scar is so deep. It is amazing that these rescued sun bears have a safe place they can live out their years. But awareness and prevention is high on the agenda for the BSBCC. Through various local and international outreach projects in schools, plantations and communities, they hope to inspire others to protect the sun bear with the aim to preserve them and their habitat for future generations. For me, I'm a wildlife biologist. I want bears to live in the wild and not in captivity, not even here. Mm. So that's why we need to stop people from keeping bear, from hunting and poaching and then uh, and, and let the bears live in the wild so that the bears can perform all of their natural um, roles or their ecological roles in the forest. Of course, the center has the same aim through nature-based tourism. So besides that uh, ecotourism or conservation tourism is good to teach visitors about the species, about the conservation, about the threats and everything that is going on to create interest in the species, it obviously also brings in quite a bit of funds. Now with these funds they are able to take care of the bears on a day-to-day -day practice but also this is giving more and more people a financial income in the area which also then again um, stops certain elements of the threats because more people are able to be employed here, get a sustainable income and then from that they also get more and more involved in the lives of the sun bears so this creates interest and will obviously help in communities as well. The local people is the one that live side by side with the wildlife and then if they know that the wildlife or the forest that is standing can make money to them, the wildlife that running wild can make money or put food for them, they will going to protect them because mm -hmm. This is a sustainable that can last for a long, long time and it's going to benefit many, many generations mm. if they understand the theory behind this with the help from the governments, like say, to protect the forest, mm. to protect wildlife and then to come up with good plans on 
on nature-based tourism. Mm. So, so this should be the way to go in order for humans, wildlife live harmoniously together, together. and benefiting everybody. Most bears that arrive at the center are too traumatized to go back to the wild, they have been able to identify some release candidates. Through close monitoring and working on encouraging the bears' independence and stimulating the development of skills, they've been able to release some individuals into the wild over the years. This however is not an easy process and only few bears that have arrived at the center have shown to be good candidates for release. As a wildlife biologist or a wildlife conservationist, we hope that the sun bear can live in our forest for a long long time mm. that they are not going to go extinct but in reality we see two different scenarios in area where the forest is not protected or the forest is way too small it is very difficult to sustain a viable population so the hope for the sun bears exactly lies on the country or the area with good political will, government commitment to protect a big patch of forest. And uh, that's the hope that they can live for a long, long time. Plus, we have to control hunting and poaching at any cost. Because sun bear populations originally is already very low. And then uh, any human mortality, uh, any human cost mortality can cause devastating effect to the population. So this is something that uh, we are facing with. So, so, so we hope that you know, in area like say Sabah, for example, the government's pledge to keep 50% of the total land area as forested. There is a high hope for sun bears in uh, Sabah. I've arrived back at my pretty noisy place here in the town of Sandakan. But I don't know if you guys realized I was a sun bear for today. <laughs> today was absolutely fantastic. It was really lovely meeting Dr. Wong. He is a very passionate guy and um, the fact that he took it upon himself to just start a sun bear uh, rehabilitation and rescue center because it was not being done, I think is super admirable. Now, of course, there are big threats towards a species as well as many species around the world but the only way that they're going to survive is if we continue trying as long as a small group of people keep trying to educate cheap keep trying to do things hopefully that will have a ripple effect but I have good faith that what they're doing is is definitely leaving its mark and planting the seeds so I'm really happy that I got to check it out behind the scenes hope you guys enjoyed it as well and I hope to see you in the next video bye